Hey everyone, it's Erin Flitter here, and I was filming a video for my morning routine when I slowly started to realize that a lot of people's morning routines are different. So now I'm going to film a video about my tips and tricks for working at home. So for all the people in the future, uh, right now what's going on is COVID-19, which is coronavirus. Most of you guys already know this. Uh, I think on the social media sphere, it has hit like 1.1 billion mentions, which is nuts. Um, anyways, so we all know what's going on. Uh, a lot of people are being quarantined or are sick. Uh, there's a lot of deaths going on. Um, and a lot of people are really scared right now. So a lot of jobs, including my own, have instituted different types of policies to protect their workers, including something called work at home. So I uh, have been doing this for on and off for like four, four years, um, not only through my business side of things, but also my work at the EPA. Uh, we have had a telework program in place for a long time, and I have been working at home part-time or uh, full-time for on and off for four years. So more recently, uh, when I had my knee surgery, I was working from home full time for four months because um, I wasn't able to go into the office. I was still recovering from my knee surgery. I have had a lot of practice with working from home. So I thought I would give you my tips and tricks for still being efficient, still trying to navigate the waters of working while you are at home in your own office. I will preface this by saying that a lot of these are things that work personally for me. Uh, some of them are science-based, some of them are things that I have just found over time, and you may be very, very different from me. You may have a very different lifestyle, very different personality, that some of these things may not work for you, but I'm hoping that maybe some of these might. So I have 10 tips and tricks for working from home. So my first tip is to use a desk. <laughs> so I know that the idea of working from home is very nice because you could like sit on the couch and you can do all sorts of things while you are working from home. But if you want to be efficient, I have to say that while I was laid up with my knee, I was either in bed or on the couch because of just the, I wasn't able to sit down at my desk because I had to have my knee extended and all of that kind of stuff. I had to make it as comfortable as possible for the longest amount of time as possible that I could work. So using a desk is really, really essential, not only because it lifts up your upper body, but because it is, you're not getting too comfortable and you don't drift off, go to sleep. We don't want that while you are on the clock. And I just, I have had the most efficient amount of time using a desk. But you also have to make it work for you uh, because most desks are not made to be very ergonomic, especially if you're like me and you have a work laptop or something like that, you don't have monitors set up at your computer. Looking down at slight angles to look at your laptop is not the way to go. So what I've done in the past is I have lifted up my laptop by placing some books or something else. If this is a short term problem situation, then just putting some books under your laptop, that will help lift the chin up a little bit so you're not getting that strain in your neck. My second tip is to use your planner at the start of the day. What I tend to do is I log into my computer, I look through my emails and I see these are the things that are more most important for me to get done. I prioritize those, I put those at the top of my to-do list, and then I start flagging items for things I can do throughout the week or throughout the day. Some of them are very quick items. If I have like a bunch of like five second, five minute items, I'll try to get those done all at the top of the day, even if they're not my priority, just because those are things that I can tick off my list because I love lists. And when I'm ticking things off, it makes me feel like I'm having such a productive day, even though I know those are super easy tasks. It can be really, really helpful to start your momentum for the day when you're working at home with those quick tasks, mark those off, 
and then you get to your more heftier tasks after that. My third uh, suggestion is to take frequent stops. So uh, this is kind of combined with the next one I'm going to talk about, but frequent stops is really, really important, especially when you're not you're used to your work at home situation. I don't know about some of you guys, but for me, I can do long standing trips and it just, it makes my whole back sore. I, I'm used to a standing desk at work um, more often, trying to transition into a work at home desk or uh, just trying to transition into, you know, there's no, there's not a lot of distractions, especially if you're using your own desk because you have your own space for working at home. So taking frequent walks and having frequent activity throughout the day, I still like to wear my Apple Watch while I'm working from home because every hour at like 9.50, 10.50, 11.50, if I haven't gotten up during that hour and walked around, it will remind me to do so. And so I know a lot of people are quarantined uh, and can't actually physically go outside, but maybe going downstairs, throwing a toy with your dog or checking in on the kids, just getting up to walk around because this is what you would normally do in the office. You would get up to go to a meeting or you would get up to talk to one of your coworkers or something like that. You would be getting up more often. I don't know many people, at least at my work, that just stay at their desk from nine to five or whatever hours you work. Uh, we all get up and we talk to each other and we do lunch with each other and we collaborate on a lot of things. We go in the government, we do a lot of meetings. <laughs> so I know that's trying to transition from work at home like you need to plan out some more breaks, uh, intermediate breaks in your day. So the next one is kind of combined with that last one. Uh, so number four is using a timer. So I thought about this while I was doing NaNoWriMo years ago, how you can do different types of speed sessions or a speed writing session where you would sit down, you would put a timer on for 30 minutes and you would just go hard and type away for 30 minutes to try to reach your uh, word count for that day in NaNoWriMo. If you have never done NaNoWriMo, it's National Novel Writing Month, and that is where you write a certain amount of words each day and you try to get to like 50,000 words by the end of the month, something like that. It might be 20,000, it may be way lower. You can set different goals for yourself in NaNoWriMo, I believe. So they call those word sprints. So I thought about that in terms of my work life sitting down, uh, putting a timer on for X amount of time. If I run into a wall, I run into a wall. I start a different project until that timer ends. So doing those little word sprints might help out a lot because it might also force you to do things like get up, walk around, make sure you are taking care of yourself physically, mentally, as well as getting some work done. Numbers five and six kind of go together as well. So number five is doing your normal morning routine. So if you go to the office, you sit down, you read your emails. This is what I do, by the way. Um, you meet with your coworker, you go get a coffee. Maybe you get breakfast, something like that. You come back to your office, you sit down, you eat, and you have your computer running and all that kind of stuff. And then you start to get into work. If you need that type of routine in the morning, keep that routine instead of maybe going out, maybe make coffee from home or make some breakfast at home or have, um, you know, those frozen meals that you can heat up or something like that. I don't really know, but if this is something that's really important to you, try to keep your morning routine because that way when you get to work on more items throughout the day, it will be just like you were at the office. Making sure that you're keeping your routines um, like you would at the office. So same thing for morning routine as lunch routine. If you ha usually have lunch at the same time every day, try to keep that going. Try to keep things as normal as possible because then your efficiency is going to stay as normal as possible. You're going to produce the same amount of work as possible. Possibly even more because you may not have as many distractions during the day. You may not have as many meetings during the day. All of that kind of stuff. So number six, like I said, is um, keeping something from your morning routine. For me, what has really, really helped is washing my face first thing in the morning. <laughs> because if I haven't had my coffee yet and I'm just turning over from bed and I'm walking straight into my office to get some work done, I really need that splash of cold water on my face. 
uh, maybe doing makeup if you're into doing makeup while you're at home or if you or if you're really into doing you know the full washing your face effect sometimes i do the full washing my face sometimes i just splash some cold water on my face it just depends on how it's going that day but getting that like surge of energy in the morning so you can either just wash your face which is what i do because i usually do some sort of workout in the middle of the day or you can shower like normal at the very beginning of the day whatever is your normal routine like i said try to keep your normal routines but getting that little bit of invigoration from washing your face is really, really helpful for me. So number seven is going along that same line where you still integrate some of your routines. If you like to do workouts in the middle of your day, keep trying to do workouts. You can still do workouts at home even if you don't have gym equipment. You just have to alter your workouts a little bit. Maybe you wanna start doing a new yoga program. So go on YouTube where we are right now and go look up yoga with Adrian. I love her channel and I love watching her videos and I love doing yoga routines with that channel. So maybe you wanna start doing yoga. Recently I got a Peloton, so I have started doing uh, the live classes, usually anywhere from 11.30 to 1.30 or something like that, something in the middle of the day, either right before or right after lunch so that I can uh, really Get a good workout in, get reinvigorated for the second half of the day. This is something that I have always struggled with personally, is getting a bunch of stuff done in the beginning of the day because I'm an early riser. I usually start work at 6 a.m. so or 6 or 6.30 a.m. depending on the day. Um, and then I have a really hard time getting going again after lunch because you're full after lunch, you start to get a little bit tired, you see the end of the work day. Uh, in your site. So getting uh, reinvigorated around two o'clock, my workouts sometimes help that as well. Number eight is continuing to chat with your coworkers. If you have some of your favorite coworkers, don't cut them out of your life. Don't just talk to them in meetings that you may have over the phone or something like that. Give them a chat, talk to them on Skype, on FaceTime. Um, we have uh, Microsoft Teams and Skype where I work. And so we'll uh, have video chats, we'll have audio chats, uh, we'll just start IMing each other throughout the day. Keep in contact with your coworkers because sometimes those relationships, especially for a long period of time, and we don't know how long these periods are gonna last in various parts of the country, but keeping those um, connections strong will really, really help over the long term. I think I really, lost sight of that right at the beginning of when I was having, uh, right as I was recovering from my knee surgery. I'd already been home for a month prior to the actual surgery. And then I was, I think I was out for about two weeks afterwards. And so when I was coming back, when I was recovering, I was in and out a little bit, um, you know, uh, trying to recover. So when you chat with your coworkers, it's really, it really is a nice way to uh, keep in contact, keep the camaraderie. Only you guys know exactly what you're going through. Your coworkers know exactly what you are going through from your work at home. Maybe you guys are copied on a lot of the same emails or something like that, but you guys are only know your situation between work and working from home. So keeping in contact with them, talking to them, brainstorming with them. If this is something that you normally do at the office where you walk into your co coworker's cube or your their office and you say, I have something to run by you. I'm thinking about doing X, Y, and Z. You should still do that. You should still do that if you have FaceTime opportunities, if you can Skype them, Microsoft Teams, um, if there is some sort of vehicle of getting to uh, talk directly with your coworkers, still try to do that. And then nine and 10 kind of go hand in hand as well. Nine is to declutter your space the night before you start working. So like I said, I usually am working starting at 6, 6.30 in the morning. So I'll often go in the night before and make sure my desk Okay. 
So I don't know what your work situation is, uh, if you are working from your dining room table, if you're working from somewhere that is not normally your office. I am lucky enough to have an office um, at my home. So it is really, really, really helpful to declutter your space the night before. So if you're working from a dining room, making sure that whole area is clear from any sort of distraction or little dips and doodads that are all sprinkled throughout your space. So for me, I run my business at the same place that I work from home. So in the day I do one thing, in the night I do the other. So for me, there's always stickers, there's always uh, paper cutting supplies, there's always packaging materials, all that kind of stuff is scattered throughout my desk. And this happens on a daily basis because I am not clean when I work on my business stuff. So I have that stuff scattered every single night. But the night before, I usually try to clean up all those little dips and doodads. I put my scissors away. I uh, make sure all my stickers are under the desk, not on top of my desk. I try to make sure just one planner, my bullet journal, is on top of my desk and that nothing else is on top of my desk. I'm currently looking at my desk. There's a planner, there's an iPad, because I finished working today. And then there's a bunch of stuff getting ready to package orders. So all that stuff by the morning needs to be cleaned up except for that bullet journal and that one pen that I use on a daily basis to make my task list. Like I said, way back in number two. And so that goes along with, and trying to do that in the nighttime, because if, if you are working at least um, from home during the day, I like to start my work right away. I don't like to declutter things before I've had my coffee. Absolutely not. That is not something I look forward to. That is not something I want to do. So I try to make sure I do it the night before so that when I get to my email, I can just quickly go through my email, go make some coffee, and then come back and start working after I've made my task list. So number 10 is to minimize your distractions. So for a lot of people, I know that kids, pets, uh, your significant others, um, for me, stickers, <laughs> uh, business stuff, all of that stuff can be a big distraction. So animals for me personal, personally is not a distraction. I often have my animals in my office with me, uh, as you saw, although the dog being there is a little bit of a distraction. <laughs> to be honest. Trying to make sure you are minimizing where you can minimize. I know in this day and age, um, a lot of schools are closing, uh, a lot of people are scared, a lot of people are quarantined. You don't really have an option for what types of distractions you have, if it's your family members, if it's your significant other, if it's your family, your friends, your kids, all that kind of stuff. But trying to find your own space and trying to minimize the distractions for me, I come up here, I close the door, my door doesn't lock, so I'll put something in front of the door if I can't have a cat come in and sit on my lap. Usually I do, because why not? Uh, for me, it's a bit more calming of an effect than it is a distraction. I love having my cat just lay on me or sit in the corner or my dog come in and just say hi and then go off and lay down somewhere. But I know that's distracting for some people, so make sure you communicate that with your family. If they are home with you because of COVID-19 or for some other reason, then just say, I have my timer on for the next 20 minutes and I'm going to be working very hard. Please do not disrupt me unless there is something very urgent. Making sure that you are communicating your needs to your family. Try not to stay stressed during this time. Um, this may not be a working from home thing. Maybe this is specific to people that are working from home because of COVID-19. Try not to be stressed. I know it's scary. Uh, my husband's a doctor. He gets briefed on this stuff every single day. I know it is scary. Um, we all have family members and friends and um, people that can be really negatively affected by this. Try to keep your head up um, and try to communicate with the least amount of negativity as possible. Um, it's fine to feel the way you're feeling. Try to take a deep breath. Try not to take any stress out on anyone and just try to get by. Sometimes 
that's the best we can do in this situation, just trying to get by. So um, to all my followers out there, I know I have followers worldwide. I really hope the best for all of you, for all of you, your friends, your family, your grandparents, your kids. Um, I don't want any of you to be hurt in this situation. And I know a lot of people are hurting and I know a lot of people are scared. So I hope these tips and tricks are somewhat helpful for you to get by while all we are all trying to do is get by right now. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you would like to join my Patreon, go to patreon.com slash designs. I give a whole lot of free stuff and I send stickers every month for those who qualify uh, at the various tiers. And um, thank you guys for being part of this community. Again, I hope this video helps you guys so much and I will see you next time. Bye everyone.